three LED lamps, all bought from the same supplier, and I was just out. I was buying some other stuff from notably coloured filament LED lamps, which I'll also cover in another video. But these two, uh, I'm going to cover these individually in their own videos because it'll be interesting to see inside for this reason. I'm looking down the end and it looks black. I'm not seeing any little circuit board like you'd normally expect. And when you plug it in, it, it, you know, the iPad makes everything look flickery, but quite justifiably, says 2 watts, well 1.9, this flickers really badly. It's horrible. No smoothing at all. This little candle lamp, which uh, it's not really what you'd call centred, the filaments, but how... Uh, this one also flickers modestly strongly, but not as bad. It draws, at the moment, about 2.5 watts. Not sure if the circuitry is self-regulating this, because I've not really investigated it yet. And that brings us to this lamp. Now this one, I added it in because I thought, it's quite ugly, I want to see it. It looks chunky and kind of, it doesn't look as nice as these, but I thought maybe they've got other circuitry in it. They've definitely got other circuitry in it, because when you plug it in, um, and noting that filament there is quite dark versus this one, uh, colour-wise, not the actual intensity as such. Um, it's 1.7 watts. There's not a huge amount of flicker, is there? I'm certainly not getting any flicker to my naked eye. It's it's, it's very good. Uh, so let's take a look at the current. The current is going down to 14 milliamps. I didn't actually check to see what the cold current was. I should have checked to see what the cold current was. It may... Well, we'll find out. I'm about to open it, haven't I? What is the cold current? It does look like it nudges down. Okay, but anyway, I'll put these lamps to the side because these are going to be covered later on. Just because it's quite interesting, I want to rip these open and see what's inside them. So I shall put them in this huge pile of stuff over here. And now the interesting thing about this lamp, I'm going to unplug that bean cap lamp holder before I stick my finger in it. That wouldn't be exciting at all. Well, it would be exciting. It would definitely be exciting for me. So interesting things. I think this is plastic. It's plastic. Uh, then the first thing I did was try unscrewing it because it looks like one of these sort of modular lights and it does unscrew. And it reveals inside a little circuit board with an inductor on it and a capacitor and a rectifier and I can't really see much else. And the glass, or should I say plastic, well I'm going to have to screw this back on here momentarily. It's kind of, I don't know if it's glued, it seems to be clipped in, exposing this. And it's got a circuit board with the other little power supply circuit board, and it's got four pads. Because you get multiple versions of this, you get a version that's got the two filaments, and a version that's got the four filaments. And I think, oh, they're actually, I think there might be bridge retracts. But anyway, anyway, let's uh, let's take this to bits. That's the best thing. So this is the type of uh, base that has the little pins that pop out here. So I'm going to get a knife, a knife, and just hike them up at the terrible risk of gashing myself, but then you go, you guys know I. I injure myself all the time, it's fine. It's just a standard, standard practice. Cut to your chum, not your thumb, or in this case I'm just cutting to my thumb anyway. So, um, let's see if we can hoik those up now. Probably can't hoik them up, I should have thought this beforehand. Oh, there we go, there we go, there's one of the pins out. And that will release the wiring in here. Now, it's an aluminium core PCB, so it's definitely, it's trying to take heat down into this, at least to get some of the heat away. I wonder if I can just force that off. Is it going to force off? It might not, because it is, a, I didn't realise that was aluminium, I thought it was just printed circuit board material. I may have to pause while I use force, or heat this up, or something while well, heating up might damage the LEDs. I'm going to try and get this off, because I want to actually take a look at the circuit board. I want to fold the components up and take a look, so I'm just going to pause while I try and prise this out, because it does appear to be glued in quite tightly. Well, that's not going back together again soon, but it was very interesting, well worth taking to bits. Very, very interesting indeed. So I was thinking that this was a cross shape, and that I was just had to desolder that circuit board and pull it through, and I was thinking, that's a bit shady, because surely then the tracks are very close to this aluminium substrate. Oh, they've got around that in a very clever way. The circuit board is actually this shape. It's got a little key on top, and the tracks come up the middle, go across on one side and then down. It's the opposite on the other side. It comes up on the back, but in the middle goes to the other side and goes down. And you put the circuit board in, and you turn it 90 degrees. And when you do that, that means that uh, the circuit board in position is now ready to solder onto these pads, and the tracks where they come up in the middle are now well away from the aluminium because they're basically supported from 
because of this hole in the middle, they're supported well away from the aluminium, and therefore there's no risk of it shorting out to it, which is just as well, because it is kind of bonded onto this uh, little sort of heat dissipator plate with a sort of strange, brittle glue. The, the LEDs are worth mentioning. Uh, they're quite unique. I made a little red dot on one end just before I took these off for polarity, as I did in the circuit board, and uh, they just solder diagonally across a pair of these leads because when this uh, circuit board makes uh, contact it connects to uh, two pairs of uh, pads and if it's just two leads going in you put it across diagonally across these two and if there's uh, if it's a four watt LED you've then got another one that then goes across that and I'm guessing maybe just spaced up slightly different height or an inch later I suppose it doesn't really matter if these touch in the middle it's pretty much theoretically the same voltage the LEDs instead of being individual filaments joined together this is one continuous metal strip, and the two little insulators are at that end. So um, inside, they've got the little insulators at that end, inside the, um, the phosphor-loaded stuff, the gel-type stuff. It's also worth noting that to aid manufacturer, they've got little dots coming off that metal frame, sticking through the side. Presumably as a spacer, I'm guessing. And the bottom of the uh, filaments is formed to go onto the circuit board. So it's all, it's all one bit of metal. It's all very well made. It's designed purely as a V filament. Very clever. I'm guessing the voltage of that is going to be about 140-ish volts. The previous ones I measured were about 70 volts per section, I think. Um, I think that's what it was, and then it added up to about 140. I'm guessing that's probably chosen for a universal voltage in the sense that 120 volts uh, rectified and smooth the voltage will be high enough to actually light that combined voltage will be high enough to light that so the circuitry uh, on the circuit board is quite interesting it's all based around a tiny little surface mount transistor type package but it's clearly got a complex buck regulator in it the number on it was 20577c couldn't find anything on the internet maybe you guys will better luck but i couldn't find anything uh, so it's got the bridge rectifier, it's got a 1 microfarad 400 volt capacitor, it's got a 3.9 mega ohm resist discharge resistor across that, which is quite a high value, very unusually high value. It's got the inductor, which is uh, 30 millihenries, not microhenries, millihenries, and that's in series the LEDs. And then it's got, uh, instead of just the diode going from the negative to the positive here, because what actually happens here is that these little buck regulators, initially it will close a wee switch in here between the positive and the output, and current will flow, but will be limited initially. The peak current will be limited by that inductor, but it will also put a magnetic field into it. But that current will be flowing through LEDs. Then that turns off, and the current uh, continues to flow momentarily as the field in the inductor collapses, and it goes through the LEDs, through this diode, and to the other end of the inductor. It just basically forms a small closed loop. And then the cycle repeats. And this 33 ohm resistor must be to detect. It must have multifunction. I'm guessing it sets current, maybe? Or is that being set by the value of the inductor? But uh, it also provides the feedback to the chip itself and maybe provides a, a voltage rail as well. So it's really quite heavily integrated. Then it goes out to the LEDs, and that is probably about 140 volts worth of LEDs, uh, with either, in the case of um, the single pair filaments, they have the 30 millihenry, but they'd probably use a different value to double the current f for going through the two parallel circuits of LEDs, which would basically be just, you know, connected in parallel with those ones. It's very ingenious. It's very, very heavily optimised. It is a mass-produced filament LED lamp designed to really put out fast. It's got this standard bit here that will, with this plastic mating device, will then let them use it on E27, E26, the small bayonet cap, small Edison screw, whatever they want to put in the bottom here, they can then adapt that to fit in. And likewise, this globe, they could have round globes, they could have the candle globe, they could have the swirly candle globe, they can have any globe shape they like that just presses into this housing here, this metal housing, which also acts as a sort of rudimentary heat dissipator. Uh, so this is a very, very, very neat design, uh, very clever indeed. It's very ultra miniaturised and optimised, and as I say, this one didn't seem to have much flicker. It's a very clever little lamp, I really do like that. It's a very smart design indeed.